Look around. Look at what we got, kid. Well, I just watched episode six, Gold Summit of the Penguin, and it told one killer joke. Hey everyone, welcome to Digital Charcuterie. Thanks for stopping by. Special shout out to all of our new subscribers. If you're new here, check out that subscribe button. We talk penguin. We love penguin here. I love talking about the penguin and love hearing what you have to say about this show in the comments down below. So please let me know what you thought of episode six, Gold Summit, in those comments. We're going to hit some spoilery content today. So if you haven't seen it, hit the pause button and come back when you've seen it. Let's get right to it. I had no idea that I wanted a Mork and Mindy reference in The Penguin, but we got one, and I was happy about it. But this episode had a lot. It was, I've said slow burn a few times, but this one had a slow burn. This was the definition of a slow burn. It was 50-something minutes to an hour, and you felt it, and it was a grind. But in a good way, character development, tension, and an ending that had me go, Damn! Right off the bat, snow is falling. We know that the Batman 2, Matt Reeves said the Batman 2 is going to take place probably around Christmas time. And the snow is starting to fall on Gotham. We had a little bit of a time jump. The mushrooms, they're in full effect right now. The blizz drug is going, going, going. And if you look closely, you got some little Bloom reference. We know that Bloom is the one who makes the drugs over in Arkham. And he is a comic villain. You can hear what I said about him in a previous episode. After that, we get right into the Falcone Manor. This is not Wayne Manor. It's Falcone Manor. It's a lot more grim than we've seen it in the past. This time, however, when we get inside from the cold, we get into a very hot room where Sophia uh, had her kicks with uh, Dr. Julian Rush. She had him tied and bound to a chair. Of course, this is starting to go more and more down that road of Joker and Harley Quinn. He is the Harley Quinn to Sophia's Joker. And this episode, if you didn't think Sophia Falcone was the Joker, this episode is really parlaying her into that character into like the penguin version of the joker which is weird to say because we know joker exists in the penguin world of the joker but they're using parts of the joker and putting them through and showing them through sophia falcone and they're doing it in a brilliant subtle way and i love it we see that she has julian rush tied up kind of like she has penguin tied up in the first episode when she interrogates him about alberto's disappearance the night that his hubcaps were stolen this time we have julian rush and this is obviously a very different context of why there's tied up but at the same time it's kind of to show her dominance over the men in her life who tried to strip her of her own power and you're gonna kind of get in that juxtaposition right now where she's getting the upper hand on them i love right after she goes out and maroney's in the kitchen cooking up a meal that nadia taught him to so he could bring it down pass it down to his children which is a very this his scene his, like they're trying to get you to feel some compassion for maroney who <laughs> He's a criminal in jail, but that's what I love about this show. Everyone is awful, but they all have aspects of their lives that are relatable, right? And that's one of his, where he has this recipe and wants to pass it down to his kids. Sophia says she really likes it, but one thing that really got me was there's a really expensive bottle of wine. Well, they reference that it's an expensive bottle of wine, and he, he pours a glass, but then he uses it for cooking. And my wife turns to me and goes, oh, no. Oh, no. 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 You do. No. This episode really touched on how cold it was. It's got a lot of references to power as well. The power struggle and the power at Crown's Point, which is still out. The generator's not working. The apartment that the cobs are in is freezing cold. They're eating half-cooked food. The eggs are like half-cooked. And Oz is like, yeah, this is fine. And his mom is freezing. Are they hinting at Mr. Freeze? I don't think so. They are hinting towards Batman 2 where it's going to be ice cold. So Mr. Freeze in the Batman 2, look out for that for sure. In the time they're eating their food, though, Francis, Oz's mom is not happy with what's going on. She's not happy with the power situation. She's not loving life whatsoever. And she actually threatens to go back to Rex. And Oz will have none of this whatsoever. And we know how Oz feels about Rex. And it's interesting that his name keeps appearing week after week. And we're seeing Oz trying to live up to this legend that he's created in his mind of who Rex Calabresi was. And this episode really, really, really focuses on that and focuses on how he wants to be remembered as he remembers Rex Calabresi. And I have a feeling we're going to get a twist on Rex, Rex Calabresi. I think it's his father, but I think we're going to get a twist that he might not be the guy that he thought he was. Holy God, what are you this showing me? His head. Come on! Oh, Everything's going well with the bliss drug. Penguin's on top. He's got the gangs coming together. But soon he finds out that the triads are out. The triad is out. 
He no longer has them. And all of a sudden, bodies of gang members are being hung all over with a finger missing, a finger in reference to Alberto Falcone, and of course, also in reference to Carmine Falcone in Dark Victory, when Carmine's finger was sent to Sophia. Oz quickly comes up with a plan to get everybody back together. He decides to just give the drug away. If you give it away, you create a need, a want for it, and he knows that if he can get his foot in the door even more, that he can take the city down from within and not have to worry about the, as he calls, Falcone and Maroni combination. He can do it all on his own by sending this out free that he'll know that he'll create supply and demand and people are going to want it and he's the only one that's got it. I wasn't sure what to expect from Squid in this. Squid shows up. You don't know how he's gonna, how big of a character he's going to be, what he's going to play out, how it's going to go with Vic. I mean, you have a few ideas of how it's going to go, but he finds Victor. And I was kind of like, what, what path are they going down here? Because he kind of approaches him, kind of starts boxing with him, starts teasing Victor like he's a kid, which he kind of is. But he starts teasing him. And then he says, I noticed you're dressing better. You got gasoline. He's like, I want a piece of this pie. He's like, I want in. Tell your boss that I want in. And Victor's not sure what to do, but he says, Okay, he just he just wants to get out of the situation. He says, "Okay, okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I swear, I'll do it." So he leaves. He has a moment with Oz, where they're talking about it, and Oz is trying to fix the generator, and it's kind of like Oz is not paying any attention to him. But I was thinking, maybe what if he is paying attention to him, but he's also trying to get this kid to grow, to expand, to be his right hand man, to be the penguin to Carmine Falcone, right? To his Carmine Falcone. He wants Victor to think for himself, to do these actions for himself, to come up with the solution that he knows is his best. This is Oz's kind of mentoring of Victor, which is, you know, obviously not the right way to mentor, but this is where Oz's mind is. And he's trying to get through to Victor. And ultimately he kind of does, but we'll circle back to that. Sophia and Sal decide they got to get after the people that are closest to Oz Cobb. Sophia obviously says there's no one. That was his superpower, right? He wasn't close to anybody. They find out, you know, he never had a father, a mother, and they, they see the picture of his brothers, but obviously they passed away. This is when Sophia enters a room and she discovers a drawer full of, full of Eve's belongings, which is dun, dun, dun. But the part that really grossed me out in this scene was that Sophia stole a cigar cutter and I'm very, very nervous for whoever she uses that on. It could be a finger. It could also not be a finger, but it might be a finger. I'm hoping it's just a finger. It might not be a finger. Also subtle nod to uh, my favorite penguin or my penguin growing up when I was a kid, Burgess Meredith, Burgess Jewelers is where Oz Cobb is living above. I loved that nod. That's what, uh, one thing I always say, right, is the Batman uh, movie referenced that 60s TV show quite often and they're continuing it now and paying homages to it whenever they can. And I, I, as a child who grew up with that show, I love it and appreciate the hell out of it. I gotta, I'm just gonna jump to, I think, one of the best scenes in the series so far. And that is we get, first of all, we get a reference to the killing joke. Sophia at the door, Eve opens the door, but she's like, you're what? Come on in. Come on in. I was expecting you. I brought you here. And Sophia walks in. And there's a very tense moment between these two. And the whole time, I'm just like, she's going to kill her. She's going to kill her. She's going to be dead. Eve is dead meat. Sophia's just going to rip Eve apart. Not literally, but she's going to kill Eve. And they have a conversation. But it also runs parallel to the very first episode, the first scene in the first episode with Oz and Alberto Falcone, where they have their confrontation as well. This one is happening I, this one's a little bit more aggressive to begin with. The other one's a little bit more jovial for a, for a bit. So this one starts off and you start to learn that Eve didn't know that Sophia was not the hangman killer. Oz lied to her all these years that Sophia was a hangman killer, all to protect Carmine, all to progress up the ladder, up the food chain of mob bossness that Oz Cobb wants to become. Eve is learning this. Eve know, is learning that her friends were murdered by Oz's boss and oz protected the boss so that he could leverage that for his own power for his own gain and she's like i have enough of this all eve does is ask sophia not to kill her friends not to kill the other ones around in this scene we also see how eve is a manipulator sophia calls her out on it which goes in line with everyone else in this show everyone manipulates everyone in this show and i love that aspect of it sophia gets up and is just gonna let eve live and then eve who at the beginning of this exchange says, I don't know where Penguin is, he, or Oz is. She says, Oz, not Penguin. I'm going to say Penguin. He wouldn't give me that kind of information. Now she says, Crown's Point. He's in Crown's Point. She's had enough of Oz. And uh, and now I'm thinking, I'm thinking Eve still isn't making it out of this show alive. It's not going to be at the hands of Sophia. It's going to be by the hands of Oz Cobb because 
the the event after the, we're gonna get to the end of this episode but next week if either it's next week or the week after but i i don't think she's making it much further than that but i loved this scene it was filled with tension and brilliant acting i don't think we really got to see eve have this kind of range yet in this show like she's had moments everyone's had moments in the show everyone's been great but the supporting cast this episode i thought colin farrell was magnificent but the supporting cast elevated everything that everyone else did and they brought it and everyone across the board was spectacular in this one and you believed everything that was going on really highlighted that it highlighted the acting and the writing of this series and it was so tension filled and you're just like what is going to happen and then when nothing happens it it was like i was still i was still nervous for what was going to come next i just couldn't believe that it was going to end that way and it did and then you move on and that's why i think eve is anyway it's going to be bad The meeting with the gangsters, Oz gets them all together. He's like, I can control the streets. I can control the power. He went to a counselor earlier on. He used aggressive force to get the power at Crown's Point on, which is showing how ruthless Oz is. He will use brute force to get what he wants. He's a master manipulator, but he will use brute force to get it if you don't pay attention. If you're not listening to his manipulation, he will use brute force, whatever means necessary to get what he wants. And this scene with the gangsters really shows that. It emphasizes that. He says what he wants. He says, they're not going to remember your name. They don't know who you are. You want to be remembered forever. The Rex Calabresi coming back. You want to remember all of it. He mentions the Elliot Bridge, Thomas Elliot Hush. There's a lot of rumors and speculation. That's where Batman 2 is going, or this film series is going at some point. Wouldn't be surprised if that, but this was a nice little gentle nod to the Elliot family right here to show them the class wars that these guys like that penguin is using them to get through to these mobsters who are basically nobodies right they're the low level guys to take him back got them in here also more references to no man's land i really think that batman 2 is heading into no man's land we've got a lot of references as the series gone on and the this episode had even more of those i think oz is gonna kill zao by the end of this i think zao is uh he's gonna go i think zao's dead he was the last one to open his beer. And I think by the end of this, by the end of this limited series, Zhao's life will be limited as well. Speaking of which, is Victor going full Victor Zaz now? He has his final confrontation with Squid. They talk. He tries to bribe him, right? He throws the money at him because he doesn't want to hurt him. And he doesn't want to bring the penguin. Squid's like, nah, man, take me to the Wizard of Oz. I love the Wizard of Oz doing beh- because we get the whole time that Oz is working in the shadows. Nobody can find him. The Wizard of Oz. Victor's like, I could take you, but he won't be back for a while. Squid's like, that's fine. I got all the time in the world. They walk. Victor turns around. Squid is kind of a dick. Victor turns around and shoots him. Terrible aim, terrible shot, but he kills him, then starts to apologize to him while he's bleeding out, and uh, and he runs away. So I don't, uh, look, Victor is headed down a path that he can't return from. You know how meaningful that is? Penguin had asked Victor to stay at home that night, look after his mom, stay at home. That's the night the power comes back on. The power comes on, a record starts playing, everyone's happy. Francis and Victor sharing a little bit of a moment, and the camera pulls back, and we see a crowbar. And who's holding that crowbar? Joker. Sophia Falcone is holding the crowbar, watching on. And she hears Francis declare that Oz Cobb is her son, that her son is responsible for turning the power on. And the look on Sophia's face says, credits. That's where it ended. It ends right there. And I was like, oh boy, man, this is coming up hard. Joker references to Killing Joke. Joker references, obviously, to Jason Todd, who I believe who oh, I've been saying is Victor as is the Penguins, Jason Todd the whole time. And as you know, Jason Todd and his mother are both beaten with a crowbar by Joker. Turns out it's not actually his mom and whatever, whatever. But this also isn't really his mom, but she's a mother figure to Victor in this scene. Next week, next week, hell is going to break loose. The is going to hit the fan. It's going to get insane next week. I can't wait to see where this is going slow burn episode but it had everything you need to build tension to build a story to the last two episodes two episodes to go they are going to be chaotic next week is reportedly the shortest one of the season followed by the longest one can't wait to see what we're going to get from this i am so excited for where this series is going and how we're heading into the batman 2 oz is starting to look more and more comic accurate oz Cobb, penguin if you will and i am just really excited to see where they're going to take this character we know like he's going to become the big bad a big bad i don't think the big bad you know no man's land you know what i'm saying but there's going to be something going on here there's going to be a lot of penguin penguin is going to be threat a real genuine threat and when he's on screen in the batman 2 we're going to say how is batman going to get out of this one that's in the first movie he's a lackey in this one 
he's going to, we're going to be like, oh, he's the kingpin of crime. That's all I got today. Thanks everybody for watching. I really appreciate this. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I read and reply to all of them. Thanks so much. Give us a like and subscribe. And until next time, may you be the master of your own universe.